So moving on to our final topic of menopause. The issue here is hormone rela uh, replacement treatment, and there are different forms of this. There are pill forms, there are patches, there are vaginal creams, and we're going to review those. Menopause is really when the ovaries start producing estrogen, and the symptoms are well known, hot flushes, sleep disturbances, vaginal dryness with associated sexual dysfunction, Women quite often have urinary problems, incontinence, and frequent infections because of the dryness. Depression is also very common, and women develop osteoporosis. Now, most hormone replacements that are given contain estrogen and progestin, but in women who've had a prior hysterectomy, they don't need the progestin part of it. They can take an estrogen alone. There's been a lot of bad press about hormone replacement and fewer and fewer women are going on to it. And some of the reasons include a higher risk of breast cancer when you're taking hormone replacement, increased risk of coronary artery disease, heart attack, increased risk of stroke, and of course, an increased risk of blood clots. The current guidelines say that if you have to use hormone replacement therapy because of symptoms, try and use it for as little time as possible, but nobody knows how little is good enough. So looking first at the oral hormone replacement treatment, the pill form of treatment, most of the estrogen in these drugs is derived from pregnant mare's urine. Most people say yuck in, research, in response to that. It does sound quite disgusting, but that's how they get it. There are also plant-derived estrogens, but these have the same risks. They are not any safer. On oral hormone replacement treatment, the risk of a blood clot goes up about twofold. And the risk is higher. The higher the dose of estrogen that you use goes up with obesity, age greater than 60 years. And the highest risk for getting a blood clot is really in the first 6 to 12 months of treatment. Of course, if you have a thrombophilia, you're pushing your risk of a blood clot up much higher than the twofold. Another option is the transdermal patch. Some of them have both estrogen and progestin, but if you've had a hysterectomy, you can wear an estrogen-only patch. Interestingly enough, the risk of blood clots with a patch in postmenopausal women is actually lower than with the pills. I'm not too sure why that is. It's probably got something to do with the dosing. And in studies, they've actually shown that there's less activation of the blood clotting system. But it is unclear if this is safe to use in women with blood clots. I personally would not recommend it. Another option is vaginal estrogen cream. And this is usually just used for the genitourinary symptoms of menopause, in particular the incontinence, frequent infections, and vaginal dryness. And it's very successful in treating these problems. There is very minimal absorption of estrogen, and the exposure is very low. We really don't know if it is safe. Now, I work with a lot of breast cancer patients who are on treatments. They give them menopausal symptoms. And in some women, to keep them comfortable, we have to use vaginal estrogen cream even a couple of times a week. I haven't really had to come up with any women with blood clots that I work with. I would be concerned. But probably, if you had to use something, this may be the safest. But I really can't recommend it. Mm. Another thing that people probably want to know about is what they call the bioidentical hormone therapy. This is kind of a newer thing. It's chemically made hormones that appear to be identical to the woman's natural hormones. And the prescriber actually tests hormone levels in blood and saliva and then gives the particular woman a specific dose for her. There's problems with these. There's no evidence that these are any better than regular hormone replacement, and there's no evidence that they're any safer. And in fact, the FDA has recently launched action against the compounding pharmacies because there's no credible scientific evidence that they're any better or any safer. In women at risk of blood clots, I'd absolutely recommend avoiding them. <laughs> 